Might as well give up and accept that I'll never be anything more than a wealthy queen of a fabulous faraway kingdom. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Rex here, and welcome to Sign Over Cosign, the show where I want to talk about it. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, the reason I'm bringing it back is because there have been a lot of topics that I've wanted to talk about recently that are a bit more personal to me, and I think they require a more informal approach. So my analysis style videos that I do, I think they're just way too formal for these types of topics. And the topic that we're going to be talking about today is disenchantment. Yes, I promised you guys one final disenchantment video, and that's going to be this one. For those of you who don't know, disenchantment is a fantasy series that came out about a year ago. It's about a princess named Tia Beanie or Bean, which is what everybody calls her, Princess Bean goes on a bunch of adventures in a fantasy-type environment, along with an elf named Elfo and a demon named Lucy. And it's an adult cartoon made by Matt Groening, the same guy who made Simpsons and Futurama, and his team. It came out a year ago, and a lot of people were, a lot of people liked it, but a lot of people were also disappointed. Matt Groening has a really high reputation in the adult animation community for just creating quality stuff like i said simpsons and futurama so what did i think about it i personally really enjoyed the ending i believe the last three episodes really showed the potential of what the show was capable of of being a fun adventure type show i've seen the trailer for part two and it looks like it's going to keep going in the direction of those last three episodes so i'm really looking forward to it however the first six episodes, which had a completely different tone from the last three episodes, really did not do it for me. They really upset me. So much so, in fact, that I spent the last year making several videos explaining on a more objective level why I just did not like the first six. If you want, you can go check out those videos. You don't need them for this video, but they do provide evidence of what I will be talking about in this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the main reason I didn't like the first six episodes of Disenchantment, and it's more of a subjective reasoning. In Disenchantment, you have the protagonist, Princess Bean. And I've described her as a millennial, basically. Now, what I mean by that is, obviously not all millennials are the same, but she has all the qualities of the stereotypes of a millennial, the bad stereotypes. She's young, she uses her father's money to do whatever she wants, she feels like the world is unfair. She basically has a sense of entitlement as well as a victimhood mentality. Now, that's perfectly fine to put on a character. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I have seen firsthand what cartoons or any media really can do to a person. Media can help further your life view as well as challenge it. On this channel, I review BoJack Horseman all the time, and I can't tell you how many comments I get that say, this made me rethink this, or this helped encourage me to do this. So when I saw that Bean was an entitled person with a victimhood mentality, I actually really got excited because with Matt Groening's reputation, I thought he would be doing something similar to BoJack in saying that people with this mentality, let's challenge their viewpoint. Let's put them in the real world and see what happens with that mentality. They didn't do that. They didn't do that, which is perfectly fine. You know, they didn't have to do that. However, they went the opposite direction and they actually encouraged Bean's victimhood and her entitled mentality. There's a lot of moments in the first six where it's made to look like we should feel sorry for Bean. Tess, follow me. Why should I trust you? Because sometimes I feel like a freak too. Wow, you're trapped in a pretty sad life. Want me to go back and step on your dad? We should encourage her to keep behaving the way she does. And quite frankly, that was something I was firmly against. In today's society, I think that we do have a major problem with the victimhood mentality as well as entitlement. I mentioned millennials, and I do think they are a huge contributor. I'm saying they like I'm not a millennial. I am a millennial. Uh, I think millennials are a huge contributor to this problem. However, it doesn't just stop at millennials. Uh, there is just a wide variety of people just coming out with something bad happening to them and believing they are the victim of that situation and that they are owed justice. Even though reality is looking them in the face and saying, no, that's not how it should be. And to see that disenchantment was furthering this mentality really upset me. It really went up against uh, my own personal life views as well as some of the views I try to push towards on this channel. 
Because with the victimhood mentality and the entitlement mentality, you really lock yourself away from listening to other people and getting their perspective, something that I strive to push with other people. I made the comparison when I first talked about disenchantment to Disney, saying that Bean is a princess, she doesn't want to be a princess, she has a talking animal sidekick, she also has a love interest who travels along with her. Um, I did that intentionally because I believe that the Disney Renaissance is a huge factor to this entitlement mindset as well as this victimhood mindset. Now I have way more positive things to say about the Disney Renaissance than negative. I love the Disney Renaissance. Uh, they were my childhood as they were most millennials childhoods but they oftentimes feature somebody who was in a very privileged position, a princess, very attractive, uh, had everything going for them, but because the story was told from their perspective, they were made to be the victim. And that got constantly thrown at people who grew up at the time over and over and over again. It helps reinforce the idea that even if you're living in an extremely privileged environment, you too are a victim of some sort. Now, just because you are living in that type of environment doesn't mean you're not a victim. Uh, you're obviously going to have times in your life where you're a victim. Everybody is going to have times in their life where other people take advantage of their situation. But I think it's important to objectively stop and analyze your life and understand how you relate to others around you. Bean had the best life in the entire kingdom. Everybody else was living a much worse life than Bean, yet she still felt the need to complain. Well, free will was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Just doing the stuff I wanted to do, going places I wanted to go. At time I stole a baby walrus, you guys were there. And there's nothing wrong with trying to make your life better. Even if you have the best life in the world, there's nothing wrong with trying to make your life better. But Bean didn't have any goals or ambitions. Her goal was just to do whatever she wanted. Whenever she had time to herself, she made troubles for others. She went on debaucheries and stuff. She literally caused the end of lives of other people. The show pointing out that this is the person that we should be feeling sorry for. This is the person that we should be hoping comes out on top. That we should be seeing as a hero, which there were a lot of episodes where she was portrayed as a hero. It didn't sit well with me. Now, in hindsight, I do feel kind of silly in how serious I took this when I first watched it. Uh, because A, of the direction the show went, it clearly wasn't going in the direction of enforcing this mindset it just wanted to establish a setting and characters before it jumped into the real stuff which was in the final three episodes and also because disenchantment hasn't had as big of an effect as i thought it was going to have you know i i just saw that matt groening's name was on there and i thought everybody was going to want to watch this and i felt really scared that so many people were going to watch bean and say yeah i should still be entitled i should still feel like a victim I should keep going with this mindset. That probably has happened to some people, but not on as big of a scale as I thought it would. So I feel really silly. So yeah, I, I just wanted to get that out there. Disenchantment Part 2 is coming out soon, and I just really wanted to get all the flaws I had with Part 1 out of the way so we could continue moving on. I'm looking forward to Part 2. It does look like it's going to be a lot of fun to, to watch and maybe even analyze. So... Uh, <laughs> It's been really interesting to think that it's been a year since I started analyzing, or not analyzing, reviewing dis the Disenchantment series. But um, yeah, it's come to a, um, a pretty swift close at this point, and we'll see what we can do in the future. I'm not stalling because I don't have an ending for this video. I just feel like talking, and if you're thinking otherwise, well, that is your own fault. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. Ad vita say. Goodbye. You're a pimp and irresponsible layabout.